It's been, a, been amazing to be in there with you. Wouldn't you have liked to have been with the wise men as they saw the star? Wouldn't you like to have been in, in the field with the shepherds when the angels come and they announce joy, great tidings, glad tidings? When they were announcing his birth, it would have been just so awesome to have been there. You know, God is so good. And let's give him a hand. As you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so continue to live in Him. Keep your roots deep in Him and have your lives built on Him. Be strong in the faith, just as you were taught, and always be thankful. Be sure that no one leads you away with false and empty teachings that is only human, which comes from the ruling spirits of this world and not from Christ. All of God lives fully in Christ, even when Christ was on the earth. And you have a full and true life in Christ, who is ruler over all powers and all rulers. You know, Christmas time is a special time to all of us, I think. And uh, let's talk about Christmas just a little bit this morning. He's so good to us, man. Amen. Many years ago, there was a couple, and they were standing in a stable, and they were somewhat thrilled and somewhat confused, and I'm imagining in some ways they were lost for words. But they're standing there, and they're looking down in awe that what's laying there in that feed trough. The fact is they're amazed at what they're seeing. They're looking up on the most perfect human that was ever up on this earth. And they're staring in amazement because they knew this child was holy, this child was special. This child was the very Son of God. And as they're standing there and they're looking down at this manger, they're reflecting on how they ended up here. Because the angel came and told Mary that she would conceive and have birth. Now Mary's got mixed feelings right here. Mary is sitting here, standing here looking at the baby and they're surrounded by chickens, cows, sheep, goats. And she knew she had the excitement of what the angel had promised her. That her child would be holy and be different and he would save all mankind. She had that hope, that excitement going. But she also had some disappointment going. They had to come from where they lived to Bethlehem, and they had come to a inn, and they told them there was no room at the inn, there was no room for them. And that was hard on her. And they put them in a stable, an old barn with animals, not a very clean place. And Mary has just went through labor to have this child. There wasn't no midwives, there wasn't no doctors, there wasn't no epidural. It was a painful birth. She's exhausted. She's tired. She's wore out. But she's got herself up and she's tried to clean up the place the best she can. Because she knows they're going to come and see him because the angel said that they would come. So she's put fresh straw down in the manger. She's got fresh cloth and, and little pieces of cloth and wrapped around him. And she's done her best to calm her beating heart down, to slow it down a little bit. 
Not only was her heart beating because of the childbirth, but because of the promise. And Joseph is standing there. Man, he's sort of totally lost to what to even think. Because here's life in front of him. He's a father, but he's not a father. It's a little bit confusing to him. Because this child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And he's with him there, and I'm, I'm imagining he's wondering, how am I going to raise the very Son of God? This is God Almighty in the flesh laying in this manger. How am I going to raise him? And then he looks outside the stable, and uh, there the shepherds come. And they're all amazed and they want to talk about what they saw out in the pasture field. How that the angels come and, and the joy of the Lord and they told them to go. And they would find him laying there among the, the goats and the sheep and the chickens. Sort of an amazing story. Sort of a different story. Isn't it? Well, let's talk about Christmas a little bit. Christmas time is when everybody goes out and buys gifts. I don't know about y'all, but most guys, I think, spend a lot of time buying their wife that special gift. Or their wives spend that time buying their husband or their children that special gift. And a lot of times we get so wrapped up in Christmas, all we think about is gifts. And we spend all the money in our billfold. Then we get our little plastic cards out and we overcharge and we pay for Christmas for the next five years if we're lucky enough to get it paid. It's all about gifts. And then we have Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, where we physically abuse other shoppers, other Christians, so we can get that one gift we want. We don't want them to have it. And it's all about gifts. Christmas is about gifts. But it's about that special gift. It's his birthday. It's the birthday that we celebrate as Christ's birthday, Christmas is. But we don't bring him gifts. He didn't come to receive gifts. He came to be the greatest gift. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the greatest Christmas gift that you could ever have. Now let's, uh, let's just look at a lot of things going on here. Let's look at why was he born in Bethlehem? If I was God and I was going to choose a place for my son, the king of kings, to be born, it wouldn't be Bethlehem. My kid would be born in the palace. My kid would be surrounded by royalty. Jesus could have been born in the palace, the palace of kings. But he wasn't. He could have been laid in a crib that was made out of ivory and coated with gold. But he wasn't. He could have been born in some get great cathedral, the, the next great preacher to come, and everybody ooh and and on and say how great he was. But he wasn't. He should, could have been surrounded by servants, taking care of every need that he had. But he wasn't. He was born in Bethlehem, in a stable, laid in a manger, surrounded by goats, cows, chickens. And the shepherds came and adored him. He was born in Bethlehem to be raised up by a carpenter, to be adored by shepherds and common people because he wanted to reach the common people, the people that wouldn't be able to go into the king's palaces, wouldn't be able to go into the great, great cathedrals, but they could come where he was at. And that's what his purpose was. To reach you and me. 
Another thing that we look at at Christmas, how many in here has got a Christmas tree? Anybody got a Christmas tree? Yeah, I've got a Christmas tree. Now, some of us have little Christmas trees, like my mom, that sits up on the table. It's uh, three foot tall. It's got fiber optic lights on it. It's a beautiful little tree, real beautiful tree. Some of us got 12 foot tall trees. It reaches from the floor and touches the ceiling. Almost all of our trees are covered with lights of some sort. Shiny lights, fiber optic lights, twinkling lights, lights that change color. Almost all of our trees has got ornaments on it. Almost all of our trees has got garland and pretty silver things and pretty gold things. But see, when Jesus, on Christmas Day, that first Christmas Day, there wasn't a Christmas tree there. There wasn't a Christmas tree in the stable. But there was one 33 years later. The first Christmas tree. The only real Christmas tree. 33 years later, this tree, it appeared, but it wasn't in some hall of some fancy home. It wasn't on the front porch. It wasn't in the living room. It wasn't in the kitchen. It wasn't in the king's palaces. But it was outside Jerusalem on the hillside. Up on the mountain. And this tree, it wasn't covered with flashing light. It didn't have the silver and the gold wrapped around it. It didn't have the icicles hanging from it. It was just an old bare tree. It only had one cross limb like that. And the ornaments didn't hang on it, but the very Son of God hung on that tree with His arms stretched out right like that, taking my place, Taking my sins, taking your sins. That's the real meaning of Christmas. Jesus came. He didn't come to be the little baby. He didn't come to be the great teacher. His purpose in life was to die on a cross for you and me. That's why He came. Now, if you look at this cross, if you look at this, this Christmas tree, there's nothing shiny on it. The only thing that's on it is His precious blood that He shed for everybody in this building. That to me is the real meaning of Christmas. It's not about gifts. It's about the gift, the greatest gift. When He died, took my place, when I should have went to hell, but He died for me. Can we really, really this season you know, it's cliche to say keep Christ in Christmas. Can we really keep Him in Christmas this year? Can He be the one that we really, really focus on? Can we take a little bit of time out of our busy year and just worship Him for what He's